really excited to talk to Alex today because I'm fascinated by his business and everything that he's working on, which is all about converting content and your knowledge into clients and into business. So I know I have a ton of questions about this subject, but again, if you have notes or if you have questions or comments or thoughts or notes, there's the chat. You can join in too. But um, if you haven't already Google stalked Alex, no worries. Here's his name. Oh, I feel like Vanna White. You can Google stalk him yourself, or we'll drop a link in the chat if you want to give him a little click and check him out. But I'm so excited for him to join us. So wherever you are, if it's a wine glass or a coffee cup, uh, please raise it and help me cheers to welcome Alex. Hey, what's up? What's Hi. happening? Doing great. How are you? I am doing so well. I'm so excited for our talk today. I have lots of hopefully good questions. Awesome. I'm ready to answer them. Oh, we already got a crowd I see going. So awesome stuff. We, in the comments. we definitely do. So. We always have such a good group here, but I'm just curious. I, I always ask people this to start off. I feel like it's one thing when somebody else introduces you at like a party or kind of hypes you up a little bit, but how do you talk about yourself? How do you talk about what you do, who you are and where you work when you are at uh, a party or maybe at a coffee shop meeting some new people? So simply put, because there, when I talk to a lot of people, there are some people that don't understand content marketing, LinkedIn, quite how some of us do. So I typically will say something like, you know, I own a, a digital marketing agency and we help our business owners, entrepreneurs, our clients uh, put out content that attracts their customers and helps them win new business through creative video concepts and things of that nature. But simple as that, converting attention from your prospects and converting that attention into clients. I, I love that. Do you feel like who you help and, and sort of the advice and tips that, and tricks that you give, do you feel like it really is focused on entrepreneurs, coaches, or can it kind of creep into maybe salespeople or maybe people that work at corporate jobs as well? Absolutely. It, it does. And it is right now. I mean, so we've got clients that are part of corporate teams of multi-billion dollar companies. And then we've got solopreneurs who's a, you know, a coach, consultant, things of that nature. And they're a one person team. So as long as you're, you know, if you're in B2B, I mean, I think it still works in B2C. It's probably a little bit of a different strategy, but mostly B2B clients. I mean, if your clients are, um, you know, VPs, executives, business owners, um, you know, leads of departments, and they're on LinkedIn and on social media to some extent. You you know you need to be marketing towards those people, building your brand, staying in front of them all the time with valuable content. And if you do that, it converts to clients. I mean, I, absolutely. And is this something that you really found organically, or was it something that you had kind of seen in the marketplace? And you're like, hmm, I think I have a lot of expertise to add to this subject. So it's really interesting, right? So I worked at a, I was working at a corporate company for six years before I started this business. And this business started as a side hustle and I was in B2B sales. So what I was really good at doing in, in that sales role, even though it's different than what I do now, I was good at identifying why do people buy? What questions do they ask? What are they curious about? How do I uncover what really matters to them and then sell to what that is? to their pain points, their challenges, their desires, all that stuff. I was pretty good at like crafting creative emails. I dabbled in some videos before. So I think my experience really helped me, but I wasn't a marketer. So I had a different perspective. So um, I didn't understand the typical SEO and website, a lot of the stuff that a lot of marketers came in with. Um, I really didn't have that background, but what happened, long story short, is I started a business in late 2019 and I said, I'm gonna do sales consulting for companies. Uh, which is while I was still working at my my uh, my corporate job, and I said, start you know, I'm a good off, side hustle. So, yeah, start off as a side hustle, and I said I'm gonna do sales consulting because that's what I know. I know how to help people grow their businesses, you know, build their territories, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of old school sales techniques and tactics and that kind of stuff. And I got on LinkedIn in late 2019, probably this time about two years ago, and everything changed. I mean, I started putting out video content, and I was like, Man, I'm gonna do something. I'm going to showcase my personality a little bit. I'm going to start doing some creative things that no one else is doing on LinkedIn. And what happened very quickly is that people started coming to me and specifically prospects 
And they started asking me, the business owners, things of that nature. And they started asking me, they're like, hey, Alex, how, what's up with this whole LinkedIn thing? Like, how are you creating the videos? And how should I market my business? And I see you get your profile updated. What should I, you know? And I was like, man, I think the light bulb went off then. And I was like, you know, I think it's not sales consulting. I think it's content marketing, social selling, learning how to take what I did on the physical front and take it on social media through content, through video, through building relationships, communities. And so that's really how this whole business blossomed. And then I just, I made the pivot in February, 2020 and said, or actually January, 2020 and said, this is the business. I think the futures in video, the futures in social selling, this is right before COVID too. So it's like, it's just like the timing was just like, it's crazy, right? And so um, it's almost like thinking that masks were going to be a big deal. And then a month later, COVID happens, right? So I make the pivot. My first customer is February, 2020. Six months later, I'm replacing my corporate income and saying adios. And I'm doing this full time. Wow. Okay. I love James's first question, which is impacts. Can you, impacts. Can you please yeah. pronounce the name of your company? Yeah. I love yeah, that. Yes, impacts. As someone who has changed their company name three times over the course of <laughs> 10 years, I feel uniquely qualified to say that the name of your company matters, but more importantly, the way you work and your exactly. client relationships matter more. Totally. I, single-handedly that's that's the that's the hill that i'm dying on today <laughs> well think about even amazon apple like a lot of these companies google i mean facebook i mean any of those the name isn't really it doesn't mean much by its own but when you attach mm -hmm. it to a brand and how they represent themselves and how they position themselves in the marketplace or service or products that's really when it matters to your point I'm curious, I feel like one of the age old sayings that we all hear all the time is sharing is caring. You know, we, we're sharing, we teach little kids to share. And I don't know where this happens along the, the thread of life, but somehow when we get to adult stage, uh, sharing is no longer caring, sharing is scary. Um, sharing our knowledge is scary. Putting ourselves out there is scary. So I'm curious for you, you know, how do you work with people, you know, to share their knowledge or to show up when somewhere along the way, sharing became not fun and exciting. It became right. scary and, and awkward for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a real thing. And when I work with my clients, it's typically two things. One, there's the there's the strategic uh, element to it and the tactical element to it of like, I'm just not quite sure like uh, what type of content and where do I put it and how do I do it? And that's one element, but yeah, you're right. I mean, there's a psychological hurdle that I think almost all of us go through at some point where we start to say, Ooh, I'm going to put myself out there. What if people don't like it? What if my colleagues make fun of me? What if it doesn't perform well? And that's going to make me feel you know, not as good about myself. And so what I really try to help my clients with and what I had to go with is that you know, there are certain measurable things that you have to look at week in and week out that you can control. How many times you post, um, how much you engage with people's content, how many connection requests you send, how many messages you send, how many meetings that you book. There's certain things that you need to measure, but going from post to post, I mean, you have to understand that when you put yourself out there in the public eye, that some people are not going to like what you have to say, that sometimes it's not going to perform the way you want it to. And that is a part of, you know, part of getting to where we want to go and advancing to the next level. If we, if we stay in our comfort zone the entire time, as you know, we're not going to get to that next level. So a lot of times it's people having to stretch themselves and say, yeah, I know this is uncomfortable and I, I don't I feel weird about doing it. And what if this happens? What, what if that happens? And just saying, look, I got to go for it. Cause if I want this business to grow, if I want my marketing to get better, I'm going to have to start putting myself out there. And Kim, you know, this too, like, it really all comes back to our own insecurities. You know, if you value so much what other people say and what other people think, and what if they think this, what if they say this, what if they, it just, it's all in people's heads, you know? So that's the other element is like, you have to just kind of quiet the noise sometimes and just say, look, um, my intentions are good. I think that's important. My intentions are good. I'm out to help people. I'm out to serve an audience and uh, I'm gonna quiet the noise and, and make this happen. So to Kelly's point, you know, what are some tactile tips that you've given yeah. clients or that you use yourself to quiet the noise? 
Yeah, one of the best, and, and Kelly had asked, you know, overcoming your fear of videos so you can market your business. Yeah, it's a it's a big time fear. The number one thing I would say is that start recording and making videos, even if you show them to no one. So every day you got to make, you know, I'm all about progress, not perfection, right? People think, my gosh, this video thing's scary and I understand why. And I got to go from not doing anything to all of a sudden I'm putting myself out there on video every week, and social media. You don't have to do that, right? So sit down, just say, I'm going to dedicate myself to making this happen over the course of a period of time. So what does that mean tomorrow or today? Maybe that means I, I sit down with just myself and I'm not going to show it to anyone. And I'm just going to make a one minute video, a two minute video, and I'm going to watch it over and go, okay, that wasn't so bad. And then maybe I show it to a couple of colleagues or a friend I trust or a family or something like that. And then maybe you get to a point where you start getting comfortable with that. And then you say, maybe I'm going to send a video DM now, which you can do, right? Now you're stepping it up. I'm going to send a video message. Wait, what's somebody. a video DM? You can send video DMs on, uh, on LinkedIn and I believe on Instagram too. So you can pull out your phone. If you're like, if you're on LinkedIn right now, since we're on LinkedIn and you go to your messages and you just click on any, I'm doing it right now. If you click on any By message. By the way, app, please write in the comments if you also did not know this. Because, <laughs> because I also yeah. use LinkedIn it's a, a lot game and changer. I did not know this. So Yeah, it's a, it's a game changer, by the way. It's a great prospecting strategy. But if you go to a message and go all the way to the bottom, you'll see the rectangle that says write a message. On the right-hand side, you'll see a microphone button. On the left-hand side, you'll see a plus button. Hit the plus button and you'll see video as one of the options. Hit video turn it on uh, selfie mode and boom, you can take a selfie video. So my point is start getting your feet wet, start dabbling in it. And then eventually you're gonna get comfortable enough to say, all right, I've done like 20, 30 of these now. Like, let's go, let's start putting myself out there. Well, let's go. Um, That's to Eric's point, if you don't wanna just use your iPhone to record, whether it's these video DMs, yeah. I assume Eric that this is like a more, if you're advanced above, an iPhone, <laughs> if you use like, I guess, like a fancy camera. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could. I mean, for the video, D, for the video DMs, um, to do it natively, you have phone. to do it through the, yeah, you just do your phone. But if you want to use something else besides your smartphone, all the smartphones have great cameras in them nowadays. I just use a simple Logitech webcam. I mean, you don't need anything fancy. If you want to get like a DSLR or whatever, you could upgrade. But for most people, um, all you need is a smartphone or a, a webcam. A webcam. So do you shoot, if we lurk on your LinkedIn right now, is all of, are all of those videos shot on a Logitech webcam? Every single one, unless I did my smartphone, it's one of those two. So that's why I tell people, you don't need some fancy, crazy setup or camera crews. You just need to know what to do with the things that you have, right? Well, and I think, you know, it's also... You know, being on camera, even if you're just sending a DM to someone is a little scary, I, even those first couple times. So I would, I would so, agree with kind of working up to that every day, like baby yes. steps. And one more thing, just from a perspective standpoint, like think about this, right? Like anything that we do, we're never gonna be comfortable or great at it in the beginning. So you have to kind of let go of this notion of like, I'm just not comfortable. Of course you're not. Think about when you were a baby and you were trying to walk or a toddler and you're trying to walk. You got up and what'd you do? You stumbled, you fell down, you landed on the coffee table. And that happened a lot of times. Did you ever once stop and say, you know what, maybe this walking thing's just not for me. I'm just gonna crawl the rest of my life. No, we kept we kept going, right? We, we faced the adversity, we faced the challenge and we hit it head on and we said, look, I'm probably gonna fall 50, 100 more times. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stop trying how to walk. So I think it comes down to like, you gotta push through. I know it's tough. I know it's awkward. I know you think you look weird. I think I look weird. Everyone thinks they look weird. Everyone points out their features. My lips move weird, my hair's weird, whatever it is. We all have those things. It's just in your head though. And so your ability to keep, as you get knocked down, just to get back up. And I posted seven times in a row on LinkedIn when I first started posting and I got zero likes and zero comments, seven in a row. So everyone starts from zero and you got to work your way up and you're going to fail and you're going to make mistakes. And that's all part of the process, but you'll do a hundred, 200, and then, you know, you get some experience and then pretty soon it's just not, it's like second nature jumping on camera right now for me. I've done it so many times and so many interviews and stuff. It's like, it's just a conversation, but it wasn't like that when I first started. No. And I love this point that Carver brings up and Eric brought it up too, when he was asking about cameras and lightings, I, I can speak for myself. 
I am very guilty. And oftentimes I joke that whether it's my fiance or my friend or somebody, they have to like save me from myself because I fall victim. And maybe you or other people who are joining today are like me. I fall victim to perfection over progress. I will spend more time setting things up. Where's the lighting? What do I look like? What's in my teeth? Mm -hmm. I don't even record. I spend 45 right. minutes worrying about the recording before I even record a dang thing. So right. how, how do you find the balance of progress over perfection, but to Carver's point, keeping that quality in mind mm -hmm. and kind of balancing out with like the quantity of like, just keep going, you know, do a post every day. Like how, what is the balance for that? Or how, how can we think about it? You don't look at it like one post or one video or even one week. You think about it months at a time, years at a time. So like, for example, I would never look at this week and be like, oh my, overanalyze my post and be like, oh man, I'm trying to learn things from them. But you can't look at one post or one week and say, oh, it wasn't quite as good as the last one. You have to look at, like I think about three months ago, six months ago, am I a better mm -hmm. content creator than I was then? Are my videos better then? Are the way I convert the clients better? Yes, 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 yes. Did I do a video last week that maybe was better than this week? Probably, you know, that's okay, right? That's, it's not a lack of progress. Like not every, you can't exponentially just get better every single time, right? You have to be okay with, look, it's just like if you're playing baseball or sports, you may have three games in a row where you strike out and you don't you don't do much, you don't get on base, and then you're gonna have three games in a row where you knock it out of the park, right? So, part of it is you got to swing, you got to get up to the bat, you got to give it, an, you got to give it a try, otherwise you're not gonna get better. Quantity versus quality, it's a great question they brought up. Um, you know, I think part of getting to quantity or part of getting to quality is quantity, right? How are you gonna get really great at something mm. if you don't do it all the time? whether you're a musician, an artist, uh, athlete, a content creator, a business, whatever it is, you have to put in reps to get good at anything. If you're learning a new language, if you're like, I want to learn Spanish, but I don't want to talk until it's perfect. Well, <laughs> you ain't never going to learn Spanish, right? Like you got to mess up. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to tell someone goodbye when you meant to say hello. You know, like it's just the way it is. I think people got to get really comfortable being uncomfortable and get comfortable with just make a mistake as part of the learning process. But you know, quality is important. I mean, I think you can't put out garbage. You can't put out stuff that's centered around your company all the time or talking about, you know, just very self-serving things. You have to think about your audience and what they care about and what they would want to hear about. But quality doesn't mean super high production. It just means, are you, are you, do you have the right audience in mind and are you speaking to what they care about? Well, and I always like to double down on, or at least is what I tell myself when I'm getting in my own head is the message matters the most. Like, what are you actually trying to right. communicate? Because right. if the message is strong, no one's going to notice that your blouse was red instead of a right. blue blouse. Or if your message is strong, no one's going to notice that you have like a dirty coffee cup that you just now noticed that's in the background of your shot or your dog is barking or whatever. I mean, I guess if the dog's barking loud enough that then they can't hear your message, but like, that the message is what yes. matters. And some of those yes. smaller little details that you see, other people are a little more forgiving or other people can kind of ignore that. Yeah. But, you know, when I think about creating content, I think the one thing that I always think about, and, and it seems like Megan is thinking about it as well, when we talk about things like doing reps or workout, if we use that analogy, it's like, I don't want to do a workout for 30 minutes if I can do a super effective 15 minute workout. Like, how can I do more with less? How can I punch above my weight? Like, how can right. I optimize all those keywords like optimize, efficiency, hack, like all those buzzwords? But like, what either platforms or apps are you using where you're like, you know, when I discovered this back in 2019? you know, it changed the game for me. You already gave one with the example of video DMs, but are there other things yeah. that you're like, I figured this out and psh, holy moly. Well, yes. I mean, here's one, and this is one trend that I think is going to continue to grow over the next however long, documenting what you're doing throughout the day. 
So people often think that I got to create content from scratch, right? I got to sit down, right. think of a subject, and then boom, I got to record it, or I got to write out a script, or I got to write out a piece of copy. And sometimes you do do that. That's fine. But if you want to work smart instead of always having to work harder, think about these conversations. Think about your client calls. And sometimes people are like, well, my client can't be on the call. We'll crop them out. We can do that in editing, right? Um, think about your Zoom calls that you have with colleagues. Like you're you're having good conversations all the time. I have clients that will be just be on the phone and they'll be recording though, so they can get the conversation and it's valuable to their audience. And then the game changer for a lot of people, and it transformed my business. And this is what we do now as part of our business was outsourcing your video editing. So especially for business owners, busy entrepreneurs, busy execs. You guys don't have time to sit there and edit all these different videos and edit becomes the bottleneck. Then it's like, I've got some footage, but I need a title or a subtitle or anything. You know, I want to look kind of creative. And so what we did is we built a whole company around a creative video editing agency to take care of that for people. But um, I've always outsourced. I mean, the past year and a half, I've outsourced all of my videos. So I don't do any of them myself, uh, hardly at all anymore. And so, yeah, did you, you spent start a little bit. with doing them yourself though. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. So I learned it. I learned the skill and, and mostly because this was what I was going to get into. Right. So I wanted to learn it to a, a deeper level than probably a business owner that does like leadership consulting would want to do. Right. But I did. And, but here's what happened, Kim. I started, I mean, it was some videos cause they were more creative. I was spending six, seven, eight hours on a video. And I got to a point where I was like, look, I want my videos to look great, but I can't spend hours on a video cause my business won't grow. So what, what we saw a place in the marketplace or we saw an opportunity in the marketplace. And that's why we're addressing that with that bottleneck of like, could you guys just take raw clips that we have throughout the day and you guys make them look amazing and send them back and then they're ready to post. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways. You could work with an agency, you could hire somebody off Upwork Fiverr, you could use an assistant, however you're gonna do it. I would just have people take care of the technical stuff uh, that you might think you have to do on your own to save you a ton of time. And then for you, I feel like when I hear that, I feel like, okay, if someone is sitting here having coffee with us today and they're like, wow, like everything that Alex is, say is saying sounds really great, but it feels like hiring his company would be like me joining the varsity team. And I still feel like I'm down here on like the JV team. What are some pieces of advice? Well, I guess twofold. What are some pieces, like two or three pieces of advice you would give to somebody who's maybe at, like the junior varsity level, like they're just getting comfortable with this. And then what are two or three pieces of advice that you would give to somebody, you know, like me at like the varsity level, who's like comfortable with putting out content and, and more, I guess, future looking of where you see the industry going? Yeah, great questions. I mean, first and foremost, I would say for just getting started, there's nothing wrong with just doing a selfie video or a video on your, you know, your webcam and you can pay some, you know, rev or subtitle to do your subtitles. There's actually even on, on TikTok and Instagram, there's features now and even YouTube where you can do free subtitles. Right. So there's really no excuse to like get started. So that's a great way to get started. Or you could use uh, apps like InShot that are pretty easy to app or navigate through on your cell phone. And then Capwing is a good one for desktop or basically uh, subtitles the same way. You can plug in a video and it'll give you a standard title up top and subtitles. It'll auto generate it for you. So, and that costs like next to nothing, right? So, but again, you're going to be a little bit more involved in the process, but that might be fine if you're starting off because maybe you've got more time to leverage. Going past that, our jobs as, as uh, experts in the creative video space is to see what's happening with video. Where are we at now? Where have we been? And then what's what's coming? What's, what's going to take somebody's video game next level? And what we're seeing is that, you know, the titles up top and the subtitles below have kind of been like sort of the standard the last couple of years of like, if your videos look like that, they're pretty good, right? And now we're starting to see a change where it's it's to stand out because things are getting more competitive. Uh, you have to do something a little bit different. And what's becoming big is storytelling in video. And it's always storytelling has been around forever, right? But if you could take the videos, that's what our, our vision is to uh, take some somebody's conversation and create a story around that to where the, the edits and the, the graphics appeal to the audience. And they kind of follow through where it's like, if it's just us talking, it's just a screen with us talking, right? But we can make this come alive through clips, through animation, through graphics, through different creative things. And what that does, because we all know attention spans, like it's just very quick nowadays. I don't say that we lost our attention spans because we still consume long form content, Netflix, all that stuff. But when people are going through the feed, 
if it's not really engaging, they'll just keep scrolling a lot of times. So how do you keep them engaged? You got have interesting things happening, right? And so if you can invite someone in a story and have some cool effects and animation, things like that, it can help bring the story to life. And people, before they know it, they've consumed the whole video. It's like, whoa, that just happened. And so that's what we're seeing as a, a sort of a future of video is, is taking videos next level. Right now, they've been a, kind of a label, a title, a subtitle so people can read them or if they don't have the sound on. And we're thinking, how do we go next level where we turn these micro moments into stories, into visuals, into effects? And so uh, that's if you're next looking to go next level, that's it. And I would say twofold. Okay, number one, I know Alex has been throwing out a ton of different apps and stuff. If you're like, oh, what was that? I didn't catch it. <laughs> Again, you can go to sendmenotes.com. We'll send you all the links and notes of this talk. I don't want anyone in the comments being like, what was the third one? Um, yeah. No worries. Don't panic. Uh, go to sendmenotes.com. Put in your email. We will send you all the notes and links that Alex is talking about. Um, but I also would add on to that and say, a lesson that I had to learn, so I'll save you two years worth of making content or more in terms of what I've been doing, is less is always more. I always felt the need. I'd be like, well, I can't tell this story in less than three <laughs> minutes. And no one is watching your video for three minutes. Like ever, nope, never going to happen except maybe like your mom and your dad. So Hi, mom and dad. If you're watching, yeah. you you will watch my three minute Thank videos. You. That's about it. <laughs> so less is always more. You know, when we're talking about the future, you know, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. But you know, our attention spans are getting shorter. I think the last report I read, it was like 21 seconds or something like that. I mean, it's insane. So I would say when you are creating content, just as much as you can, remember, less is more. Like you don't, don't create yeah. a five minute story. Right. I mean, and, it's, and here's the thing, like, that's a great point. I mean, attention spans are still there because I, because we'll consume hours of Netflix. We'll consume our favorite shows. We'll sit down and listen to a podcast. They're there. But the, the question is, are you good enough to when someone's randomly scrolling through the feed to stop them and then engage them for three to four to five minutes? Probably not, at least in the beginning or for a while, right? Until you've got maybe a big following or you've got your brand. So starting off, yes, absolutely. I think focus on 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, minute and a half at the max until you get a good rhythm down, until you really understand how to engage your audience. Because yeah, people are, it's a feed-based platform, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok. It's not like someone searched for your content, wanted to hear exactly what you had to say today. That'd be different, right? That's different. Now you can talk and expand upon things, but people are just going like this. So anything you can have that's going to engage that audience is huge. And that's why we've seen a rise of edutainment. That's one thing that we help our clients with too is how do you start incorporating edutainment? And people are like, well, I'm not that funny or I'm not like the humor. It's like, you don't have to be, right? But it's, sometimes it's with effects. Sometimes it's something that you just say in there that gets people to smile or keep them engaged or it's a it's an edit that we can do. So there's all types of things, but you'll see more and more edutainment. I mean, you see it on TikTok everywhere between the back and forth skit videos and that kind of stuff. People are trying to figure out how can we engage our audience in more effective ways. And you sitting on camera going, Hi, my name is Alex. This is my company. And we start like nobody cares. And it's yeah. just boring. And boring doesn't sell. So and what do you what do you talk to your clients about when it comes to multiple platforms? I know that the one of the main ones you focus on, especially with B2B, is LinkedIn, which makes so much sense. But maybe for some of those other entrepreneurs out there who you know, to echo Jen might be playing a little bit more on Instagram as well as LinkedIn. How do you feel about storytelling across platforms? Are there different formats that you feel like, man, this really works well on Instagram, but on LinkedIn, this is dead in the water. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, in a lot of ways, if you've got a story to tell or a message, you can tell the same story on all the different platforms, but how you tell it is going to be a little bit different, right? Like TikTok, for example, is, you know, nine by 16, which is vertical for the most part, right? So vertical video does really well. So, and it's also very fast. I mean, people are scrolling extremely. And if you don't just entertain them almost or have something very important to them or relevant to them, they're going to keep passing by. So that video is going to be a little bit different than a LinkedIn video. Um, and so LinkedIn is going to be typically a one by one kind of square box. And typically you've got a title up top, 
And you still need to engage the audience uh, right away, but typically it's more from a business standpoint, thought leadership standpoint, things of that nature. So you have to would have to know those nuances going to each platform. Instagram is a little bit more laid back, a little casual, a little more fun, a little more vibrant. And so you'd want that kind of feel to it. So could you post the same piece of content on all three? You could, you know, it wouldn't be the worst idea, but if you had the time and you could do it, you'd want to repurpose to have the right clips for the right platforms, depending on your strategy. And I would also say that pick the, when you're starting off, pick one to two platforms that you feel like are your customers are there and there's an opportunity for you there. And hopefully there's some decent organic reach. Don't try to say, well, I need to be on all the platforms. You know, I'm gonna follow Gary Vee's strategy right away and, and implement everything I possibly can. And, you know, he's got a lot of great stuff, but um, when you're just starting off, get good at one or two and then you can always expand, you know, so build the skills, figure out what works and what doesn't. If you had a new client coming to you and they said, you know what, Alex, I'm super busy. You know, the kids work, work from home, whatever. And, and they said, I only have an hour or maybe I only have two hours to give you a week. Where do you think, you know, thinking about the future, thinking about, you know, setting yourself up for success, what would you tell that person? Like, here's the best way that you could spend an hour or two hours a week when it comes to social selling. Social selling, not content creation? Or content creation. It could okay. be either okay. one. Okay. So, I mean, from a content standpoint, I would say, look, if you can give me an hour or two a week, that's actually really good from a content standpoint. What I would tell you to save even more time so you could spend that time engaging, sending messages, that kind of stuff is that, again, could you document throughout the day? Could you record some of your sessions? Could you, you know, be on a client call, record that? I mean, there's so much, if any business person throughout the day, you're dropping these little gold nuggets. I mean, otherwise you're not doing business, right? If you're not, if you're not providing advice and perspectives and storytelling throughout your day to either your team or your clients or your audience or some in some shape or form, you have to be doing that, right? So if you can capture that and then you can send the editing, that's going to take you no time, right? Um, but what I would also, and what I work with my clients on is if like you're saying that hey, I hardly have any time to create content, that's fine. Can we sit down for 45 minutes a month or an hour a month? And we're going to come ready with 20 topics that we're going to turn into video content. And then we can take 20 of those and repurpose them into 20 text posts too, right? Because you can remix it and tweak it and it can be a totally different post, but it's kind of the same topic because you're talking about a lot of the same things. You know, that's part of your, you have your content pillars and you stay on, online with those for the most part. So if you could give me 45 to an hour uh, a month and we came prepared for that meeting with 20 topics that matter to your audience that your customers care about, we could shoot them in from a webcam just like this. I could ask you the questions, you give it one minute answer. We just got 15 to 20 clips. And then we take those 15, 20 clips, we repurpose them to 15 to 20 posts. So now you got content for potentially two months, but maybe a month and a half or a month if you're posting aggressively. And so there's really no reason you couldn't do it. And then again, now if you're documenting throughout the day, now you've got even more. And now you can use maybe that hour or two throughout the week to engage with people's content and connect with the right people, your target audience to send the DMs, you know, unless you've got someone doing that for you, of course, but you know, on LinkedIn, especially you've really got to engage on the platform. It's, it's tough to make it on there by just kind of posting and coasting, as I call it, just dropping posts there and then kind of walking away. It's tough because people really, they reciprocate the love and they, they it's a community. And so, and, and I, I'm pretty sure the LinkedIn algorithm rewards you for engaging too. So you've got to spend some time on there, but it doesn't need to be all day. Well, and it doesn't need to be all day. And I also feel like if you go in with a strategic plan, it makes right. it a lot easier when you're just kind of like scrolling along. That's when right. all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I've been here for 20 minutes <laughs> and I'm just scrolling along. I don't even know what I'm doing. So I know for me, I can speak for myself. I say, okay, I'm going to go on LinkedIn for 10 minutes and I'm going to try to find two articles that I think are really interesting. And I'm going to find five posts that I really like and add my thoughts or comments or question to them. Like I have yep. a very specific thing in mind. And I will say there are times where maybe I'm watching like a TV show or something that a commercial comes on, then I might scroll mindlessly. Right. So like there's a time and a place that yes, okay, the mindless scrolling comes into effect. But for me, a lot of the times when I'm jumping on these platforms, it's with very specific agendas. So I would say if you're one of those people that is just kind of perusing, 
try out an agenda and see if that tweaks anything for you. Beautifully you know? said. One of, one of the questions I proposed uh, earlier this week on one of my posts was, how do you know if you have a good week on LinkedIn? And this could apply for any platform. And I proposed the question because a lot of people get on here and a week goes by, like, I don't know, did my post do okay or not? And they're not quite sure, crystal clear on if they had a good week or not. So I just went through like, look, if you're coming into the week, know what you need to do to be successful know what you need to do actions things that you can control to have a good week and then know what a good week looks like what is it is it several meetings booked with potential clients is it x amount of posts that you've made is it x amount of direct messages you've sent so when you're very you know how it is i mean with anything whether it's fitness whether it's business when you're crystal clear on the object objectives and goals and you've got a plan coming in each week you actually do it in less time and your results increase that's the that's the great part about it and then what do you, if someone's like trying to be strategic, like, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write my content, I'm going to shoot my videos, but then they just find themselves getting stuck. What do you tell clients when they come to you and say, Alex, I'm stuck? You know, how do you kind of get them out of that stuck place? I would tell Jamie to go talk to a few of your customers and start figuring out, ask them questions. What questions do they have? What are they curious about? What challenges are they running up against? And I don't know what Jamie does, but you know, whatever, whether you're a coach, consultant, salesperson, just figure it, get inside the head of your customer. And again, that's what's awesome about it. you could literally ask them. And if you're on a Zoom call, here's a hack, record it. And then when you answer, that's your content, <laughs> right? So you can make it really easy and then you can go back and just transcribe and that could be your text post. So I just wouldn't overthink it. You know, I think sometimes we think we got to be like the most clever, creative person ever. And sometimes, man, the right message in front of your client, like if they just see the right thing from you that day to say, well, I never thought about, man, that is something I'm hung up on and I wasn't quite sure what to do. And now because of Jamie, I've got an answer. What does Jamie do? Oh, she's a, oh, she does this. Oh, interesting. You know what? I think we need to bring someone like that on. Let's give her, you know, and so that's how it happens because you're building trust and credibility and likability before they even think about reaching out to you. So you've cut the sales process and sales cycle down by, you know, 70 or 80% sometimes where they're almost ready to, to work with you as soon as they've, they've interacted with you a couple of times. Well, and because they've, they've gotten a chance to, to get to know you, you know, right. or feel like right. they have maybe yeah. through the through the yes. screen in a different right. way. Right. Selfishly, I am asking this question, even though probably <laughs> very little people will care, but I care. So I'm allowed to ask it, which yeah. is you seem to be very busy. You're running this company. You yourself are putting out a lot of content. So not only are you putting out content, you're helping other people put out content. I'm curious from my standpoint, like how have you been able to manage that? Are you calendar blocking? Did you hire a virtual assistant? Like how are you yeah. able to, unless you have a clone machine and in which case I'm first in line because I would love to clone <laughs> myself. Um, how are you doing it all? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, at first it was all over the place, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, it was a day before I was going to post. And I'm like, what should I put out tomorrow? And like, it's just not a place that anyone should should have to be. It's a terrible place to be. And it throws you off from your business, to be honest. It really hurts you. So yeah, to your point, um, I'm just very strategic, right? So I plan out a few weeks. So I know like uh, not every single post, but I know a good portion of what my posts are going to be two, sometimes three weeks out. And so every Wednesday today, I block out the morning for two hours. And that's if I'm going to film anything, record anything, whether that's green screen stuff, whether it's just stuff like this whether it's maybe I need to look at my raw videos and send them to editing. So kind of Wednesday I knock, it's like my production day. I don't do a lot of meetings. And so um, even this is kind of like a rarity. And so um, you guys were just that special. I'm here, right? But um, yeah. but I think, yeah, block out calendar time if you need to. That's really helpful. And then in the morning, since I, I actually love the creative space and writing scripts and that kind of, for me, it's fun. Every morning as I'm having my coffee in the morning, I spend time and I just look at my content calendar. So, and if you don't know what a content calendar is, it basically, I just pull out my notes app and I have kind of a Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, and I can kind of plug in what I'm going to post each day. 
And so I'll just pull it up and drinking my coffee. I'm relaxing. I'm like, hey, what do we got going on for next week? You know, today's Wednesday. So my my two posts for, you know, my today and then tomorrow and Friday, those are already done and covered, of course. So now I'm looking next week. Is there any gaps? Oh, Thursday, I don't have a text post ready to go. Cool. Let me write that real quick. Boom. Now we're covered for next week. What's going on the following week? Well, we got a couple of videos in editing. Those should be back next couple of days. Perfect. We're covered there. Maybe I'm going to do a creative video. So I'm writing the script out for that because it's going to be a fun one, right? So the point is, have a process and a system and have a routine that you get in. So maybe it's, you know, 15 minutes in the morning where you're going to write stuff out. Maybe it's you block out an hour once a week or whatever it might be, or it could be a couple hours once a month to get started. Yeah. It's best to have some type of pro you got to have intention and you got to put some time into it. If you don't, you end up all over and then you actually spend more time on it, but you get less out of it because when you're trying to be creative out of nowhere, it may creativity is one of those things like you may be creative right this second and then in two hours like can't think of anything so don't put yourself on the spot just like music writers they're in the studio like every day right they're not like all right once every month i'm gonna go in and like record the greatest song ever because it might it just might not happen like that they may be on the tour bus they may be out they may be after a show they may be in their hotel but every day they're putting pen to paper or digitally and they're creating so i would recommend try creating throughout the day or not throughout the day but tr try creating more throughout the week, whether it's daily in the morning or afternoon, whatever it might be, get in a habit of thinking about it and then have a calendar, you know, whether it's a physical calendar of the month and you're plugging in your content or whether it's, I use the notes app on my iPhone and I just, again, write out Monday through Friday. I don't post on the weekends much and I just fill in the slots. So if today's Wednesday, maybe tomorrow and Friday are crazy busy. Just, just look at Monday next week, Wednesday and Friday and start there three times. So maybe tomorrow morning you're having your coffee or you're eating your lunch, write out a post for Monday and Wednesday. And then maybe you're going to film a video for Friday and then next week's done. Now you're looking at the following week. You'll feel so much better when you're ahead of your content versus trying to kind of scramble. And again, that's why documenting is so important because you can get a lot of content for not doing anything. No, I love, I've never done the documenting thing, but you've totally like triggered a little <laughs> light bulb that I'm like, oh, why haven't I been doing that? Uh, well, think about, get, you know, smart. If, if you look at Gary Vee or a lot of those like big marketers, they're just having conversations and they're just documenting them along the way. Now they've got camera crews and that kind of stuff sometimes, but we have conversations all throughout the day. So how much of that are we taking and using as content? And sometimes that's the best content because it's coming from a real actual conversation. So you sound more natural. You're not trying to figure out, am I, am I saying this right? It's different when you're reading a script or trying to say something in front of a camera versus having a conversation with somebody and just recording it. So a hundred percent. Okay. We've reached my favorite part of our discussion, which is basically <laughs> the speed round where we're just going to copy all your homework. We're just gonna get it. You're gonna show us all the answers and we're just gonna copy. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What is the best thing that you have started using or doing lately that you absolutely love? Like you're telling everybody about it. Uh, the one thing I, I would think of off the top of my head, I mean, I, there's nothing I'm like absolutely in love with the last few weeks that I've done new. But I have, there's a mic that I started using. It's just a little guy here. And um, it's a Bluetooth mic, which is kind of nice. You can hook it here, or you can just kind of use it as a mic if you're interviewing somebody. And so um, I've been using that. It's like a hundred bucks on Amazon. I told all my clients about it. Some of them ordered it. And um, so that's been kind of cool. Because what happened was I went to go film outside one day. I was like, I'm gonna go try some different, I like to try and test and try different things. And I was like, I'm gonna go outside and film along the river and it's really cool scenery and I'll do, shoot some videos, brought my tripod out there. It's a Wednesday, it's my production day, right? So I had the time blocked out, of course. And I got out there and I was like, yeah, I don't know how the sound's gonna be. And the sound was just not good on my phone because wind and outside noises. And so I was like, I need something I can just plug into my Bluetooth. And so that was the solution. I love that. What is that little guy called? It is, um, I'll have to send you, I don't know off the top of my head what it's called. Okay, you'll send it um, to us. I can, we'll I can put send it, it in to the you. notes. Yeah, for sure. We'll put it in the notes, which if you want the name of that, go to sendmenotes.com and <laughs> we'll send you the notes. Um, okay. I feel like when people are really busy and they have a lot going on, which is, obviously that would be you, you tend to give a lot to other people, but you don't necessarily give to yourself, whether that's time or energy. So what's the last thing that you've given yourself in the last 
year, like 12 to 14 months that you felt like it really changed the game for you. Like you were so happy that you gave yourself that either physical gift or time or, or something like that. Well, recently it's been like small things, like just giving myself a weekend to not do any work. Right. And I, I, I love what I do. So it's hard. Right. So I still want to work a few hours, even on the weekends, but I've been better with just letting myself have like, Hey, I did some work in the morning and now it's, you know, one, two o'clock you're done. Just check out, just don't even think about it, you know? And that's been hard for me as an entrepreneur and you know this, right? And, but the other thing I would say is I took a trip to Nashville, so that was fun. I did that with a buddy and that was just us two. And so we had fun for about three days and that was in, uh, what's that, April of this year. So that was fun. So it was like, I took some time just to get away. I didn't really do hardly any work at all, a little bit here and there, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I think that stuff's important. You gotta let go it's sometimes. It's so important and it took me a lot of years to figure that out. So <laughs> if you could just skip ahead and start learning it now, that would be really good. Yeah. Um, what is the next thing that you're really excited to learn more about? It could be a subject area, like I'm really interested in learning more about SEO, or it could be something very tactile, like, you know, I want to learn French or I want to read this certain book or something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very in my lane in terms of what I do. I mean, for me, it's creative videos. I just want to, we want to be the best, the best in the world at doing it, you know, putting out content that's just next level creative content videos. And so um, I'm, I'm always trying to figure out what's the next thing I could do personally as a content creator with what I do with the edutainment stuff. But I'm also thinking about my clients and what can we do to service them better? How can we make the videos look different than anyone else is doing? And so it's not the market. It's not what everyone wants, but it's what our clients are searching for, you know? And so that's the key, right? But, um, but it's definitely creative videos. I just want to take everything next level all the time. I think you constantly got to evolve. You constantly got to innovate. Otherwise a couple of years goes by and pretty soon you're not, it's obsolete, right? So you got to constantly be thinking about what's the next thing. What's the next thing without getting too far ahead of yourself, because sometimes you need to stay where you're at because something's working really well, but always testing and trying new things and, and trying to figure out what's around the corner. I love that. Okay. If you had to pick, I have this theory where the old saying used to be, you are the summary of the five people you spend the most time with. But now I feel like with this, these crazy things, you know, yeah. we're not just the five people that we spend the most time with in person. We are the summary of the five, maybe accounts or humans or brands, or you're following them on Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn or whatever. So what are some accounts or humans that you follow that you really feel like they fill your cup? You're like ever like, yes, like I see their posts and it's either helpful or positive or just you're really, they, they kind of light, light you up. All right. So this is going to be kind of like probably cliche. I could give you a real like celebrity person too that I follow, but I don't do a lot of like content consumption because I'm like, Con, it's so it's part, such a part of my business. I'm like, I don't do a lot of it outside of the business side, but I, honestly, like in my heart of hearts, it's, it's seen my clients post their content. And I'm talking about people that literally were petrified to get on camera and create content. They didn't think they could do it. They had internal hurdles, uh, psychological hurdles, external hurdles from their industry or whatever the case may be. And to see them out there and I'm watching something, I'm like, wow, like they're inspiring me to do more. Like that is the coolest feeling that gets me fired up. And I just, I've seen so many people go through the transformation that when people are like, yeah, someone DM me today and like, you know, I don't know if I want to get on video. I don't know if it's for me. And I'm thinking, I've heard that so many times and I've literally watched people just be absolutely amazing on it, you know, and it completely transformed their business. So, um, so that's, I think that's probably my number one is watching them evolve and transform. And are there any cliche celebrity or brand accounts yeah, that yeah. you just feel like you follow because that you like either how they're editing videos or maybe you like kind of watching? What is that? Keep your keep your enemies closer than your friends. I'm totally butchering that. Keep your keep your uh, friends close, but your enemies closer. I think is what. Yes, it is. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So are there accounts yeah. that you're like, I want to I want to follow them and make sure I know what they're doing. The, you know, I, I watch some of Gary's stuff, you know, Gary V just because I feel like he's a pioneer, he's a pioneer in his industry and, um, you know, he's always forward thinking. So sometimes it's interesting to yeah. see what he has to say, but I don't, I don't consume a lot of his stuff, honestly, but.
But Dwayne The Rock Johnson is someone I appreciate following. And not even from a marketing standpoint, it's more from just his, his attitude towards life. I think, you know, and I don't know the guy, obviously, but he seems very positive. He's out to make an impact. He, um, you know, he, he puts in the work, which is inspiring. You know, he's almost 50 and he's still just, at, he's in the prime of his career in is life. He and he's, really? Yeah, he's 40, he's 49. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so, um, you know, he's built multiple brands now mm -hmm. and I, I just genuinely, again, I don't know the guy, but I think he's a good guy. And I think that he, um, a lot of his values, I think align. And so for some reason I'll see his stuff pop up and he's like probably the one celebrity that I actually see his content <laughs> other than that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I feel like he did come up on my explore or something page. I don't know what it was. Um, because he went up to, a celebrity tour. Yeah, bus. I saw that one. Yeah. Yes. And he rolled down the window and he's like, Have you guys seen any celebrities yet? And obviously they freaked <laughs> yeah. out because, like, he's right. Celebrity. I, oh, yes, yes. Last week in the tour bus. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Tour bus. I don't know why I couldn't remember that so, word. Things like that. So yeah. good. I mean, I, I just love the down to earth. I just love people that are just humble and down to earth and, like, as great as you are at something, like, at the end, they were all just human beings. And I just, as we scale and get bigger, I just always want to remember that. Like, it's just, you know, take care of people and treat people, you know, just remember that everyone's just, if they're, especially if someone's following you and they're taking time to like or comment or like watch your stuff, I appreciate every single person that takes time to consume my stuff. I am not, I put my audience on the pedestal, not me on the pedestal. And I think that's just a, a cool perspective. Oh my gosh. No, a hundred percent. Okay. Our group here, we love homework. We love getting homework. We love doing homework. So if you could give us all homework for this week, it could be to watch something specific. It could be to do something specific or listen to a podcast or I don't even know what. Um, what homework assignment would you have us all do this week? I would say definitely, you know, um, put together that content calendar, whatever it looks like for you. So just start, if you're going to get, you know, into posting content, if you're not consistent already, is that just write it out and think about, you know, documenting throughout your day and the customer conversations and some of the stuff we talked about today, but just map it out. Just say, Hey, maybe you're not doing anything this week or you haven't posted in a couple of weeks. Just say next week, Monday through Friday, how many times am I going to commit to posting? And I'm not going to let that go. Like I'm going to commit to it. And I'm going to follow through with it. And then start writing it out and then just say, get, commit to yourself to get on a plan every single week. Hey, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to post or Monday and Thursday, I'm going to post or whatever the case may be. It's just progress over perfection. So get it down, block it in calendar if you need the time to create or whatever it is. But, you know, don't leave this session without taking some type of action. Oh, so good. It's such good homework. <laughs> um Remember to go to sendmenotes.com to get all of the notes from this talk with Alex. But Alex, how can people keep learning from you, following you, getting your knowledge in their life? You can go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I'm, I'm most, uh, I spend most of my time, right? So Alex okay. B. Sheridan, I think we've got the links for that. I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, YouTube, and then you can go to my website, impacts.com. And, uh, and you can find ways to book calls with me and time with me. Ah. Uh. I love that. Well, Alex, thank you so, so much for joining us. I loved all of your gems. They were so good. I just wanted to send a big cheers from me to you, but thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for stopping by. Yes, absolutely.